from Nutanix. Um, here to talk about the best storage on the market, clearly. Um, so what we'll get into is a quick intro video about what Nutanix is. So you might have seen this on YouTube. Um, then we'll go through resiliency, scalability, and performance, and some key takeaways. So rather than listen to me, let's watch a video of someone speaking American. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties from uh, VMware, of course. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Sabotage this actually. <laughs> Just uh, talk much yourselves, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hypervisors allow multiple virtual machines to run on a single physical host and mediate all I.O. operations, including read and write requests. A centralized storage array, such as a SAV or NAS, is typically used to provide shared storage for all of the VMs. Nutanix takes a different, much simpler approach. Its converged architecture incorporates local direct attached storage for fast performance and greater flexibility. Each node in a Nutanix cluster includes flash-based storage to deliver massive IOPS for high performance, as well as hard disk drives for low-cost, high-capacity storage. Adhering to the principles of a software-defined solution, Nutanix implements all control logic as a software-based service. A virtual storage control runs on each node in the cluster, improving scalability and resilience while preventing performance bottlenecks. With storage and control logic now local to the guest VMs, there is no more need for expensive centralized storage or dedicated storage networks. The Nutanix distributed file system aggregates local storage across all nodes, creating a single storage pool that can be partitioned into one or more data stores. These data stores are then presented to the hypervisor using the standard NFS protocol to provide storage for all hosted VMs. Because the hypervisor communicates to the Nutanix software exactly as it would a traditional storage array, there is zero change to the virtual environment. VMs are provisioned and managed as before, but without having to configure buttons, volumes, or read groups. Now let's look at how Nutanix manages a typical write operation. When a GIST VM needs to write data, its request is passed to the Nutanix controller, which then executes the write to local flash storage. It's also important to fully protect data so that it is always available even if it fails. To ensure the strongest protection, data is replicated synchronously across multiple nodes. For a typical read operation, requests are served by local storage resources. Keeping data local to the VM provides the fastest possible performance. That means for the majority of read requests, <coughs> data never traverses the network. With many enterprise workloads, the older the data, the less frequently it is requested. When data becomes cold over time, it is migrated from flash memory to more economical hard disk storage. However, if that cold data at any point becomes hot again, meaning it is requested more frequently by a VM, Nutanix automatically promotes the data back into flash for the fastest possible performance. What happens if there is a node failure? Nutanix supports standard high availability capabilities, such as VMware's HA, so a VM will automatically start on another node. If that VM then needs to read or write data, it sends its request to the local Nutanix controller. If the data being read is not local, the controller determines where replicate data has been placed and forwards the request to the correct Nutanix controller. The data is then sent back to the local Nutanix controller 
over a standard Ethernet network. The local Nutanix controller passes the data to the VM through the hypervisor and stores it locally for future access. At the same time, the Nutanix software once again replicates the data throughout the cluster in order to return the full cluster system to a fault tolerant state. Each Nutanix node runs independently and leverages the Nutanix distributed software architecture to create a completely unified cluster. The Nutanix virtual computing <coughs> integrates as many as four independent nodes into a space efficient 2U appliance. For more overall cluster capacity, nodes can be added seamlessly one at a time with zero downtime. With Nutanix, you can start small and easily expand to achieve truly massive scale. It's perfect for nearly any virtual workload, including virtual desktops and end-user computing deployments, private cloud projects, big data applications, DR initiatives, and more. Nutanix, the virtual computing platform for software-defined data centers. Okay, sorry about the volume, guys. So, next we'll go into the key capabilities. So, I thought I'd highlight three of them. So, resiliency, scalability, and performance. So, to me, these are pretty important for any storage solution. So, starting with resiliency, um, this is a five node cluster showing a virtual machine on the first node over here. And then you can see that it's got a starter local, and we've got a copy of that data somewhere else distributed throughout the cluster. So, all we're talking about here is what happens when a node fails. So in the previous video, I went over it a little bit, but I thought I'd highlight that HA will restart the VM, no big surprise there, and then the VM will access data remotely or locally, depending on where it is. Then what will happen is the cluster will detect that data has been lost from the original node, and it will re-replicate it throughout the cluster. And that's done by all nodes, so it's very, very efficient and very fast. The next thing, the data will be localized as it's read. So if it's never read, it'll never be localized, but if it is read, it will be localized. And then at this point, we can actually tolerate another failure and we repeat the process again. Now importantly, in this five node environment, we've only lost 40% of our potential performance if we've even lost two nodes. Um, and then we can tolerate another failure. We can actually survive all the way down to two nodes, depending on capacity. So from a scalability perspective, if we start with four nodes, so this is what the back of one of our blocks look like, you can see we've got an amount of IOPS and an amount of capacity. So as we scale another node, we actually increase linearly both performance and capacity. And we keep doing that as we keep adding nodes. So you don't get to that point where you drop off either performance or capacity. Now this video, if this one works, is how we scale from a performance perspective. <coughs> So I'm going to go for a minute, so... And you're going to love the background music to this. Yeah, elevator music. So this is just our GUI. So this is what we call our prism interface. And default password's admin, just so you know. So here we're showing we've got a block running at about 100,000 IOPS. And now you need some more performance. So what do we go and do? We go and order another node or another block. And here we're showing we're expanding one node at a time and the linear increase in IOPS. So this is just showing how granular you can get. Now you might have a couple of big projects, so you've gone to hell with it. I'm going to buy some more blocks. So adding a block at a time, you're getting very large increments of improved performance. Up to, here we are, a million IOPS with how many nodes that is. And then what about beyond a million IOPS? Well, just keep adding more nodes and you just keep scaling. So the idea here is you never bottleneck, you just keep going as many nodes as you need. All right, so key takeaways. Uh, most of the vendors will talk about some of these points and they're all really important. Um, that's why all of us are doing similar things. So keep it simple. You don't want to have a storage admin who's got to look after all this stuff. You don't want to have silos of storage and you want to be able to mix workloads. So you don't want to have to have dedicated storage for business critical apps and then dedicated for VDI and things like that. Um, scale from three to n nodes. So we don't have an upper limit. Um, you can mix any node type you like. So we have high capacity, high compute, um, low capacity, high compute, and high capacity, low compute nodes. So you mix and match to get whatever you need. 
improved performance because we keep the data local to the host and where the VM is. So you're not traversing any kind of storage network in most cases. Um, next one, fault tolerant. So fully self-healing. So as we showed on the slide before, if you have a node failure, the cluster heals itself and can tolerate a further failure. So in our next release, you'll actually be able to have two concurrent nodes fail um, without having any data loss. And then all the features you come to expect, DGIP compression, support for SRM, VAI, replication, all that stuff that we're used to with a centralized array, you can do with a distributed file system. So thank you.